I'm Amber Miller and I am from Austin Community College. Ooh. And I am a I am a trainer, I'm a professional development supervisor for Austin Community College and an ESL instructor. So oh, so what will happen today? This is I always give this as a three hour training. So what will happen today is a very condensed version. We'll do a couple of activities, but uh, just know that uh, just know that this is condensed and I'm going to try and keep it to the time. So please, everyone, relax and participate. Um, we're this is an experiential training so uh, that I give and uh, we'll do a couple of activities if we have time and then at the end get the book so there's an ebook uh it's principal it's uh free i encourage you to look over the book and share it with your colleagues uh at the end of this thank you all right so this is the most important thing though which is why are the first three weeks important as i was developing this training i did a little bit of research and uh, studies show that for adult education students, if they are going to leave the class, if they are going to quit the program uh, for reasons that are not external. So we can't help it if a student leaves because they got a job or they don't have childcare. We can't do anything about that. But if they're going to leave because of the class, then they are going to do it in the first three weeks um they're going to make that snap judgment and leave in the first three weeks so in my research there's three factors that determine that that, that determine a student staying or going in adult education because as we know adult education programs are free and so they are not they're not beholden by money to stay <laughs> they're 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 there of their own volition and their own will so we uh so these are the three factors that go into the first three weeks to guide student retention so the first one is routine now routine uh is something that my instructors and a lot of instructors don't really think about but by establishing a routine, we are establishing a comfortable space for students to come to. Our adult students are adults. They often have appointments or some, a kid gets sick and they can't come to class. So by establishing a routine, if a student misses class, if the next time they come to class, it won't be completely different. They'll know what to expect and they'll know what they missed. So that's the importance of routine. Routine is also good for our students who uh, may not have had a good, a, um, a good or happy educational experience or may have had a limited educational experience because it teaches them how to be a student, how, how, how a class goes from day to day. So that's the importance of routine, which we'll look at. Another, another point in the thir first three weeks to keep in mind is value. And this is value perceived by the student. Do they feel like they are learning English? Do they feel that their time is being used valuably? So establishing that, making students see the value of coming to class is very important as well. And then, of course, the last thing is community. Building that community of learners in your class, making them feel comfortable is super important to keeping them in class. When you learn a language, when any of us learn a language, the very first thing we are asked to do is talk about ourselves, where you're from, what you like. And if we don't build a sense of community in our classes, students won't feel comfortable talking about those personal things. So these three things all lead to retention. And now we will go into some activities. So community, how in the book, there are a lot of lesson plans, a lot of lesson plans about building community in your classes, things that you can use both online and in person. So for your homework, I sent out this Padlet map, which I will go to now. And 
This one, this one I always do with my students in class. And thank you for those of you who filled it out. For those of you who didn't fill it out, I'll put it in the chat. Um, if you want to do it. And as you can see, we are very diverse here in this session. And I really enjoyed looking through your pictures. So what I do for my students is the first day, all they do is put a pin on the map where they are from and i help them if they can't do it then I, i'll do it for them and what i what i ask them to do is like i'm from new braunfels texas and then put their name in the comments here and a lot of you did that um echoes from baltimore and ceci from el salvador I, I'm just showing the pictures because I love the pictures. <laughs> One of our friends is from San Antonio. Hello, neighbor. And Guatemala. I did want to show you one because I thought it was super cool. Um, Monica's from Caracas. My first teaching job was in Barcelona, Venezuela. And so hello. And Owensboro, Kentucky. So you want to push the plus, the plus over here. And then you want to put in your um, zip code or the city and um, the city and state that you're from. Houston. I wanted to show this one because I thought this is cool. Wendy, Wendy Buckley from Columbus, Ohio, put in the sunset, tonight's sunset. So basically what I do is the first day they put in, they put in their, um, they put in their, where they're from. And then gradually day by day i have them put in pictures and i have them talk about something from their hometown that is famous so i have them put in a picture of something famous and then talk about it and this can be scaled up and down for for level so this is one of my classes and i love it because it's such a clear representation of how international my classes are and and where everyone's from so i have them put it in and then day by day, like if we have, um, uh, maybe she put in this one, it's like the highest track in the world, <laughs> running track in the world in Kazakhstan. And then, um, yeah, so they just put in things that are famous from where they're from and talk about it. And so just like a one or two a day, just as a warm up, just to get to know everyone a little bit more. And they love it. They love showing off about their country and where they're from in their hometown. There is a free version for everyone to use, but you are limited to three Padlets. So what I do is just reuse them. So uh, I just uh, delete them or just uh, clear all the answers from them. But my school does have a does have a subscription so i don't have to do that anymore all right going back to the presentation okay going back to the presentation uh next yeah i just do it in class yeah click the plus i'm sorry i'm just going back through the comments through the chat but uh, let's see all right, so next I wanna talk about rules. So in the first day, on the first day, I establish the rules. I establish the rules. And this is really important for, for everything, for, for routine, for providing value to the students, and also for building that community because to have a set of guidelines that everyone must abide by, so rules. So in the chat, what do you think are my rules? for my English class. What do you think is number one? No cell phones, turn off cell phones. Okay, respect everyone, respect, respect. Nope, to do all that, what do you have to do? Respect, attendance, aha. Uh -huh. Yes, that's closer. Yes, share, try to do your best. Everyone is valued, I love all those. On time, very close. Uh huh. To do all of these things, you have to, Come to class, attend, yes, be present, <laughs> attend, everybody who said that, yes, exactly. Have to come to class. And I don't say anything about, oh, this is the first day, I don't say anything about coming on time. I don't say anything about um, what happens if you miss class. All I say is come to class because 
uh, because if you start off with, especially in a major metropolitan metropolitan area with a lot of traffic like I do, like I live in, uh, if you start off with come to class on time, if they get stuck in traffic, I don't want them to feel like, oh, I can't go to class. I'm I, I'm going to be late. I don't want them to be scared. I always tell them one hour is better than no hours or two hours is better than no hours. So come to class the time that you can. Um, so come to class is my first one. What is my second one? What do you think? What is my second rule? We had a lot of respect and participation. All that's in my third rule, but what is my second rule? Participate, how? Practice, how? Talk, how? Communicate, how? Raise your hand, how? Only English, yes. <laughs> speak English, speak English. Yeah, so for, for a lot of my, especially in the lower levels, because we have very diverse classes, we have to, um, I have to underline that the rule is speak English. So, so I'll say, oh, what, uh, Jose, what language do you speak? And he'll say Spanish. And I'll say, Andre, what, what language do you speak? And he'll say Russian. And I'll say, uh, well, if Jose and I speak Spanish, can you understand Andre? And he'll say no. So it's not just about, oh, it's English class speak English. It's about respect. And uh, yeah, so, so I think, um, so, so I say speak only English. I mean, there is a point, especially in the lower levels, where I let them explain or help their partners in their native language, and that's fine. But in general, and especially with me, I want only English. And, and that's why it doesn't say only, just speak English, please. <laughs> and then the last one is um, respect others or participate or make mistakes. And then it depends on you and your class. I, depending on the level, that's what that uh, uh, is, is it depends on what I'll say. So, um, but yeah, so just three. In the first day, I give them three rules. And then I say, you know, in the syllabus, there's more, there are more, um, there are more rules or we'll make our own rules, you know, like if your cell phone rings, you have to bring cookies, those kind of things. But, but if, uh, but in, in for me to establish these rules, first day as they come in, you know, is very important. Um, so these are just some other activities in the book. There's mingles for walking around the room and asking the same question over and over again. Find somebody who's, those are in the book. The ebook, again, we'll, we'll post at the end. Wanted posters is another activity I do. I'm just going to skip over it very quickly. This one's fun because I have them draw their partner. Don't write the partner's name, draw the partner, imagine what their partner is wanted for, description, etc. And I have them do that one day and then the next day I'll post them in the classroom. You can also do it online, but I'll post them in the classroom and then they have to guess who every person is. So the all the lesson plans are in the book. So if you want to know how to teach that, then it's in the book. So uh so box of me, but I will do this one with you. Okay. So box of me. I, I always show them this box. Now you can do this online. It doesn't have to be a box. You don't have to have a box, but box of me, I have this box and I tell everybody, hi, everybody. This in this box, in this box is a, uh, is everything about me. Lots of things about me. So can you guess what is in, the, what, what is about me? And then I have a person pull out an item and they're like, Ooh, and they show their partners. Let me see. Ooh, what is that? What is that? And they ask. That, so they ask. Um, uh, and then I ask them, what, what, why do you think this is in my box? So what do you think? Why is this in my box? Anybody in the chat? Uh, my dog. Yeah, I have a dog. Yes. I have a dog that looks like this. Mm -hmm. I have a dog that looks like this. And then, um, yes, my fur baby. I have a schnauzer. Yes, a mini schnauzer. So, and then in my, um, and then 
in in person classes, I might show them a picture or online. I'll just go and grab a dog out of the yard <laughs> and then yes. All right. And then we'll pick up pull another one and they'll be like, ooh, what is that? What is that? And then they'll guess and I'll put it on. A lot of these things I wear. <laughs> yeah. And then um and then I'll guess why? Oh, diver. Yes. I like swimming. Yes. Yes. Actually, my favorite hobby is scuba diving and then i'll show them they don't they don't have that vocabulary usually so i show them the um the the picture of me scuba diving so so it goes on like this and there's and so on this one and on this one it says put five things in this box mm -mm -mm. the five things in this box that represent you of those five things only one can be a picture you have to underline that because otherwise they'll bring like a wedding album or something and um and and it'll take a lot of time so just and then uh bring the box to the next class so we do it about me first and then I take a volunteer to take the box home if there's not a volunteer then I volunteer the most vocal person in class and say that they have to do that um uh -huh. Um, so I have some questions. What are, uh, especially about the English in the chat, uh, do I allow them to use their phone for translations? For basic levels, yeah, especially if it's something very important, I will post it in English and let them, um, if it's an important piece of news or something. But other than that, I say no cell phones because I don't, I want them to experience English in class and not experience translations into their language. And um, and so this activity, this activity I I do a, as a warm up every day until we get through everyone. So one person a day, and they have to do it. And they bring five things, and we all guess why those things are in the box, and then they tell us. With higher levels, we'll do a presentation, and um, more of a presentation. But it becomes very meaningful. I've had classes where lots of people have cried, you know, and and the, to, to think about things that represent you that are actual physical objects rather than pictures is a very meaningful experience for for students and it, and it really helps to build that community and to get everyone to know each other. So moving on. <sighs> uh, this is probably the last thing that we can do today is a kahoot about the teacher and I and I will and we'll do it very fast so. <laughs> so this activity and the last one we just did are also about building teacher immediacy and um, and that means making students feel comfortable with you as an instructor because it's not just about them feeling comfortable with one another it's about them being able to come to you with any of their questions or problems so uh let's do this one ready and i apologize i only have the basic one so only like the first 40 people who get in can do it um but y'all just watch if you don't get in and i'll put the link in the chat All right, I'm just gonna start for time and uh, the the joining instructions will be on the bottom, okay? If you don't get in, um, let's see. Or, so this is questions you're too afraid to ask the teacher. Everybody, the questions are about me, your teacher, okay? They're about me. So what do you think about me? How long have you been teaching English? What do you think? What do you think? How long has Amber teacher been teaching English? Yeah, 20 years. Well, actually I should probably, it's maybe 21 now. So 20 years, yes. And let's see who got it. Ooh, Lee, nice. Ready? Gotta go. Did you always wanna be an English teacher? Now I will say, um for my students i make them ask me the question at the end so did you so to practice the, saying the question so they'll say okay ask me a question everybody did you always want to be an english teacher and then this mm -hmm. 
uh huh no I originally want to be a singer and then students say really show us and then I show them and then they say ah I see why you're a teacher <laughs> Sam uh, is in number one now now here's this one how tall are you what do you think because I'm online you can't see but I'll put a picture of myself so you can see what do you think Mm hmm. Yep. So uh, I am five foot 10 or also 182 centimeters. And we are at the end of time, actually. So I'm just going to skip through. So it just goes through. Are you married? And that answer is none of your business, right? So <laughs> it is uh, it, how much do you weigh? It's the same one as this one. Don't be nosy. I teach them that. Excuse me. That's not a question. Good question to ask any of those and then i'm just i'm sorry i'm just going to skip through so you can see the questions the link to this is on is in the book so you can you can um copy it if you want how old are you ha ha 42 yes and then mm, or don't be nosy how many brothers and sisters do you have and where were you born and then what are you afraid of the answer is walmart and rats <laughs> and then and then the last one is what is your blood type which i always have like one korean student and that's the that's the uh that they get a kick out of that so anyway so that is the um kahoot about me i very quickly want to go back to the presentation just so you have my contact information again the and so again this was a smattering of a three-hour presentation on the presentation is also um routine how i set up my board and this is also in the ebook uh sample routines of how i conduct my classes and oh <laughs> rewards okay i left that one in and then value um different activities to increase value in your class including a ticket out the door but i just want to go back to the end here's my contact information uh that's my email address and this website i made for instructors the book is also on this website so uh, let please email me if you have any questions or if you're interested in me doing the whole three hour thing for your program thank you